Welcome once again to Vlog Vlog. I am your host. Today, I'll be taking a look at the cat adventure game Stray on the PlayStation 5. Stray is also available on the PlayStation 4 and Windows PC. Stray was developed by the French team over at Blue 12 Studio, and this is their very first video game. The game costs $30, or it comes as part of the PlayStation Plus Extra and Premium subscription services at the time of this review. I ended up playing it as part of my PlayStation Plus Premium subscription, of which I paid the prevailing rate. I was not given a review code or given any special discounts. I'll be including a couple of very light spoilers, nothing with regards to the story, but I will be talking about some gameplay elements that are not mentioned in the trailers and kind of show up later on in the game. Stray follows an unnamed ginger cat as he gets separated from his colony. Now, this first section of the game, where he's with his other cat buddies, is kind of what I hoped the entire game would be. You're basically just a cat doing cat things with other cats, which is really awesome. However, this section is only about five minutes long, which to me seems like a bit of a missed opportunity. I mean, come on guys, just let me be a cat for an hour or so and then bring on the robots or whatever, but five minutes? That's not cool. That's not cool at all. Although, that may just be because I really love cats. I also had a ginger cat myself for almost 18 years. He was awesome, man. And I still miss, miss you, buddy. There are plenty of cat moments in the game that I really loved. There is a dedicated meow button, and when the cat purrs, it causes the controller to vibrate, and the purring comes out from the controller, which I thought was a really nice touch. There's also areas where you could sleep, and you can even get a trophy for sleeping for over an hour. You can hop into boxes, knock down stuff, get a bag stuck in your head, and rub against robots. Overall, I think they did a really good job making a game with a cat protagonist. Anyway, so the ginger cat gets dropped into a city inhabited by robots, and he meets a robot friend who becomes his little backpack. Your new friend also becomes a way to communicate with the other robots. A whole lot of the game plays as your standard adventure game. Someone needs to you to get a thing, so you find someone who has a thing who will give it to you if you get them something else. I'm honestly not the biggest fan of the, this kind of gameplay, but it's not the entire game. As with other adventure games, you have to solve puzzles or do things that sometimes only seem to make sense to whomever made the game. It's not all that bad, but it does sometimes mean you're doing some backtracking. The main problem that I have with these sections is that there's no map, so you may end up wandering around aimlessly trying to find your way around. The fact that everything kind of looks the same certainly doesn't help matters, and the lack of an in-game manual kind of sucks. There are these other sections where you have to run away from monsters, which aren't bad. It's mainly just run away from monsters. They do get more complicated later on and require you to solve puzzles. Now we're getting into the light spoilers. Again, spoilers of the light variety. So the cat gets a gun. I mean, it's more of a flashlight, but it's a weapon that can blow up the monsters. The gun doesn't really work all that well, and for a game about a cat, I thought it was a bad choice. Thankfully, these sections don't last long, and they take away the cat kitty's gun before too, mu too long. And that's pretty much it for the spoilers. Overall, the gameplay is fairly solid and fun, but for me, the most interesting thing about the game comes from the perspective of being a cat. Now, house cats are small animals, and they're quite fragile, so it makes certain sections much more intense. It's also really fun to see what a cat sees in the grand scheme of things. This game wouldn't have the same kind of impact if you were some indestructible robot. However, the game does feel somewhat unnecessarily restricted for a game about a cat. Cats can pretty much get into anything, 
but our little stray is very restricted on the, what things he can jump on or interact with. Jumping is done with a click of a button, which is only con contextually, so it's not like you're really making the cat jump. This is the same for some other actions that the cat can do. You can only do a specific action if the, you get a prompt. Graphically, I thought it looked pretty good, but the lack of variety in environments is really what hurt it in my opinion. The game is also rather dark, but I guess that's fine. It's not a choice I would have made, but it's pretty standard industry-wide for Western developers. Story-wise, I thought it was interesting. I'm not sure if robots were necessarily for the plot, but to me it kind of felt like they did it more so that they didn't have to do facial animations. However, what really struck out for me is the lack of closure. As a huge fan of Cats, I'm really glad that a game like Stray exists, and I hope they continue with it in another installment. I think many of the issues with the game can be fixed, and I would like to see more of this world. However, the game can be beaten in the first playthrough in about 4-5 to five hours, depending on how much you wander around. It can also be beaten in under 2 hours. With that in mind, while I think it's a great rental, I just don't think it's worth $30. I'm also not sure how someone who doesn't like cats would feel about the game. I was willing to overlook a lot of its flaws just because I thought it was so cool to play as a little kitty cat. To me, Stray falls into the category of a great game plus game, or in this case, a great PlayStation Plus extra game. It's really fun, and it doesn't overstay its welcome. As a game as part of a service, I think it's great. As a standalone product, I'm not so sure. I really hope that there's a Stray 2 that focuses more on being a cat and less on interacting with robots and running from monsters. Overall, it's not a bad first attempt by developers at Blue 12. It's a pretty neat game, but the final product is a little hard to recommend to anyone who would have to spend $30 on it, or they don't already have a PlayStation Plus Extra or Premium subscription. If you're already subscribed, check it out. And if you have a PC, I personally would wait for a Steam sale. I want to thank you for watching my video. I'm just an old guy learning how to make videos on his Apple Macintosh. So there's no reason to take anything of what I said all that seriously. Nothing what I said should be considered an endorsement of any of the aforementioned products. These are just my opinions based on my experience with the game. Thank you again, and I hope you have a wonderful day.